For example five, we're going to find two more derivative rules. We're going to find the one for tangent separately from secant. And you know, we're not going to use the limit definition of the derivative. So you remember how math works. Once you've proven something, then you can use that something to prove something else, right? That's the axiomatic system of math. And that's exactly what we're going to use on tangent and secant. We got the easy ones out of the way, sine and cosine, using the... Uh, limit definition, these would be pretty brutal that way. If you could do it at all, I don't know, there's a challenge for you. Okay, so finding the derivative of tangent, I'm going to rewrite this as sine divided by cosine. Remember, this was a strategy whenever you're finding, like you're solving some sort of trig equation, you don't know what to do. Okay, so I'm just going to make it all sines and cosines. And why did I do that? I did that because I know the derivative of sine and I know the derivative of cosine. I have a quotient of two functions. All I have to do is apply the quotient rule to this. So y prime is equal to the derivative of the top is cosine times the derivative of, no, just times the bottom, cosine, minus, let's see, the top, sine x, times the derivative of the bottom, negative sine x all over the bottom squared cosine squared x. All right, and now it's time to just clean this thing up a little bit. So uh, cosine cosine is cosine squared, and then we have a negative sine times a negative sine plus sine squared over cosine squared x. Hey, do these cosine squared x's cancel? Of course they don't. Don't you dare. Instead, make um, cosine squared plus sine squared equal to 1 by the Pythagorean identity. That's 1 over cosine squared x. And then I just have one more to do. This is a reciprocal identity. 1 over cosine. Not a reciprocal identity. I think it's just the definition. Yeah, it's the definition of what? Secant. It's secant squared x. So we just found the derivative of tangent derivative of tangent is secant squared. So you know whenever you were looking at lots and lots of trig identities, like sines and cosines always went together well, tangents and secants always go together well, right? And the same thing is true about the derivative rules. All right, let's see what secant is. Well, if I use that same kind of uh, intuition, then I would expect there to be, let's say, a tangent involved in the derivative of secant. Might be a pretty good guess. All right, so I'm going to do the same kind of strategy that I used over here. Can't I rewrite secant? Well, we already talked about secant as being 1 over cosine, so why not do that? Now, once we learn the chain rule, we could rewrite this as cosine x to the negative 1 power, not to be confused with the inverse of cosine, because that's totally different. But the reason why I can't just directly take the derivative of this with the negative one powers because this is a composite function and it would need the chain rule. So instead, I'm going to use my purple crayon and mark that out, go back to my green crayon, and then just use the quotient rule on this where the top function is just one. Okay, so y prime is equal to the derivative of the top is zero, right? The derivative of a constant is zero, times the bottom, cosine x, minus the top, one, times the derivative of the bottom, derivative of the bottom is negative sine x, all of this over the denominator squared, cosine squared x. Well, wow. same thing that we had before, almost a little bit. Okay, cancellation crayon. That, of course, is gone. Negative 1 times negative sine is a negative, no, positive sine. So sine x on top, 6. <laughs> Silly. Over cosine squared x. And that's not normally how you see this written. So instead, I am going to separate it. So notice that I've got, I've got two factors of cosine down here. I'm going to split them up. I'm going to split it up as sine x over cosine x, cosine x. Or if you prefer sine x over cosine x, 
times one over cosine x. And I did that because, hey, sine x over cosine is tangent. And one over cosine is secant. And then, you know, in math, how we like to keep things alphabetical, we will probably just switch the order of that. So the derivative of secant is secant tangent. Derivative of tangent is secant squared. And you're going to see that the other two functions, cotangent and cosecant, are going to look really, really close to this. All right, so here, let's take a look and summarize all of the derivative rules so far for the trig functions. So we have the derivative with respect to x of sine x is just cosine x. Derivative with respect to x of cosine is negative sine. Okay, so notice how I organized it. I put all of the regular trig functions on the left-hand side and then all of the co-functions on the right-hand side. Remember, co-function are just the trig functions that have co in front of them, cotangent, cosecant, and cosine. Yeah, there you go. All right, we just proved these two. Derivative of uh, tangent is secant squared, and, no, not this one, and derivative of secant is secant tangent. Okay, so if we look over here at cotangent, derivative of cotangent, it is negative cosecant squared. Notice how similar they are, but its derivative is, in fact, negative. All right, so then the derivative with respect to x, x of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. Also very, very similar to what it was for secant, but it's negative. And so now you can notice when we put them all side by side, which ones are negative? All of the regular cofunctions are all positive when we take the derivative, and then all of the cofunctions are negative. Very, very handy to help you remember which ones are supposed to be positive versus which ones are going to be negative.